everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan and today we are continuing our Ford 5.4 liter three valve build series with part seven, our oiling system, cylinder heads, and lifters. Before we go any further, let's thank our amazing sponsor, Summit Racing. They have been sponsoring this build and it wouldn't be happening as quickly without their amazing support. They've sent me a whole bunch of awesome parts, so make sure you buy all your speed parts from summitracing.com and all the links will be located down below in the description. So today's kind of a fun day. We're putting the cylinder heads on, we're putting the oiling system on, and we are putting our lifters in. All really essential things, maybe not the most superhero-esque work, but it is really, really gratifying to put both your cylinder heads on and see your final result, more or less what the engine is going to look like when it goes inside of the car. I also want to mention that we are upgrading the oiling system. Normally I am a Ford OEM stock kind of guy. I want everything from Ford and that is true with the timing set. We'll go over that in another video, but the trick for these engines for years now is to go with the Melling oil pump upgrade that is recommended by my fellow YouTuber Ford Makaloko and he is the man when it comes to these 5.4 three valves. So I'm gonna go ahead and take his advice and go with the upgraded volume Melling oil pump. Today's a little repetitive when we put the cylinder head on just because things have to be really perfect when you're putting the head on, especially when it comes to these torque yield bolts. There are no do-overs, so you have to be correct on that. So it gets a little repetitive going over all 10 bolts three different times, but I promise you it is worth it and I tried to cut out as much filler as I could with being as concise and accurate as possible. So with all that out of the way, let's jump in, let's do it. Now we can worry about our oiling system and what does that comprise of? Well, it comprises of our stock pickup tube. This is just our stock one that I cleaned out. I sprayed the inside very thoroughly with carb spray and compressed air, so I know there's nothing in here. Check the screen, make sure there's nothing in there. This is basically a new part ready to go back in. I've just cleaned it very thoroughly. This is our stock oil pump. This is totally junk. Throw it into the trash. The only thing you're gonna save are the bolts. My new unit sent over by our friends at Summer Racing is made by Melling. This is the upgraded pump. This is the new trick hot go-to part for this engine. Melling was able to cram 20% more volume in this oil pump. So this is the hot taquito. Check that out. It's beautiful and it's gonna keep our engine running really well. And I also wanna mention there's two versions of this pump. So this is the stock PSI version, around 60 pounds or so, but they make an 80 pounds version, and why would you want that? Well, if you had an older engine with higher tolerances, you might want the more oil pressure. Since my engine's brand new, I'm gonna go ahead and go with the stock PSI, just with more volume, and that should help our oiling system do better in the long run. Let's go ahead and get the stuff installed. So when we're installing our oil pump, we just need to look at this flat spot on the crank. There's two of them, there's one on the other side, but you only need to worry about one because it'll automatically line up. Just reach in with your fingers and rotate this until you can see these two, they kind of look like little bumps, but they're basically essentially a flat spot. So just clock that in an orientation that's going to agree with the oil pump as you're putting it on like this. And you might not get it at first. It might take you a couple of tries of reaching in there and readjusting things. It's okay, it's not a race. And sometimes you have to kind of like prop it up a little bit as it's going on, you know? Like that. There we go. See how nice that, oh, there it is. See how nice that feels? If it doesn't go all the way fully back, just take it back off and readjust the, uh, just readjust the inner workings of the oil pump until it meshes really nice and it lays completely flat against the block like this. And then we can grab our bolts and just start them. We don't need to tighten them all down just yet. So there's three of them total in the spots I'm putting. And then we can just put those all down by hand. And then in the fourth bolt hole, we have this long one that comes on the left-hand side of our timing chain. And that just goes in there. Don't worry about this guy too much. I'm just gonna thread it in so that way I can torque these down and it'll actually like go in and out uh, when I install the timing set. This one doesn't have to be torqued down just yet. And then we're gonna set our torque wrench to eight foot-pounds. And just go across with it. And there you go. And now we can remove this bolt because this goes on with our timing set and we're gonna need it later. And then this is something I like to do, you don't have to do this, but I recommend it, is just grab some Permatex Ultra Slick or you can use engine oil and just dump it down the oil pump while you're rotating the engine over just to kind of prime it, you know, get its life started off right. And 
There we go. And this will lubricate those gears inside, just because I, I noticed they were a little dry. And we don't want this thing to start up dry, do we? No. There we go, that's perfect. So I noticed in my instructions for my ARP bolt kit, it says that this pedestal has to be taken down by 70 thousandths of an inch. So this only applies if you are using the ARP kit. If you're using the stock kit, you can go ahead and skip this step. But we can see that it measures out at 1.47. It's the only thing we really need to worry about. So we need this to read 1.40. And then, you know, it probably doesn't matter too far into the thousands and hundred thousand spot. We're just, we just want to make that seven into a zero. And how you do that, I'm just going to use my bench grinder and be very careful and go um, very square and only little bits at a time. How you do that is entirely up to you. So now we can see that that seven now reads zero. So this thing's ready to go. And I've already cleaned out the threads and cleaned this out with some carburetor spray and compressed air. So it's very clean inside. There's no metal chippies or anything. So this is ready to go on our engine. So now I can install our pedestal on this stud and I'm gonna do my grind side up because I think the uh, mount for the oil pickup is a little more forgiving than the nut here. And we grab a 17 millimeter wrench and just snug it down. There's no torque spec, just, I don't know, wrist tight. Use your best judgment. So I've already replaced our O-ring that came with our oil pump and I've lubricated it up, never put an O-ring on dry. And then we can just put the pickup into the oil pump and put the strap down on the pedestal. So next I'm gonna put the bolt in for the pickup for the strap side. And uh, it didn't come with a washer, but I really feel like it needs one. So I'm just gonna put one on and I'm not gonna tighten this down. I'm just putting it on like that. That way when I tighten the pickup bolts on the pump, it doesn't move so far I can't tighten this down. So we replace our pickup tube bolts. These these little guys with their little washers. Make sure you don't cross thread it. It is just into aluminum. And when you're bringing them down just go as evenly as you can because if you tighten one side down really far and then tighten the other down really far you can disturb the o-ring in there and then it won't seal which kind of eliminates the whole point of oil pressure. There we go, and then I need to grab my torque wrench and set that to eight foot-pounds. And again, just go as evenly as you can. And there you go. And we can tighten the pedestal bolt. I don't have a torque spec for you, so you know, just rich, wrist tight with that 10 millimeter. There you go, don't even think it. So after we're sure that our heads are gonna work for us, we need to check if these valves are leaking. And how do you do that? Well, you can either take a spark plug or what I like to do is just use my pinky finger and grab some water. Oops. And just fill up the cavity, the combustion cavity, just like that. And you can just kind of look at it and see if it's bubbling anywhere. I don't see any. And some people like to use gasoline. I don't like using gasoline because it's stinky and flammable and uh, potentially toxic, so not something I really want just, you know, sticking my finger into. And we're gonna take some compressed air and spray it into the intake valve runner. No bubble. No bubbles. And then do that for the exhaust as well. So we can see that there are absolutely no bubbles like flowing out of here. There's like one or two bubbles just from pouring the cup in, but there's no like stream of bubbles or, you know, a big problem like that. So go ahead and do that for all of your combustion centers. And what we can do afterward is just soak it up with a paper towel. And there you go. So just go ahead and do that for all eight of these. So this is the very last combustion chamber I am testing and watch. <laughs> That's a boo. So this head needs to go back and have this valve reseated and ground so it actually seats and has combustion pressure because if you don't have that, the whole engine is going to run terribly, which will completely defeat the process of rebuilding the engine. That's a boo. Okay, so it's about a week later. See, bad things happen to me too on builds, but this, as far as bad things goes, this was pretty mild and tame. Uh, they actually got this done in one day. It wasn't that bad. It's just, you know, filming and things sometimes take a little longer than I'd like. I'm gonna go ahead and try it again to double check their work. They even told me at the machine shop that it probably would have been fine, but I'm not gonna risk my entire engine on a probably. So we're gonna go ahead and grab the rest air and blow it up that intake runner and make sure we're good. 
mint. Now the head can go on the engine. So I'm gonna show you guys how to mount one cylinder head and the other side is the same, but on the reflection side. So, but it's a mirror, so they're not exactly interchangeable. A lot of cylinder heads, are, they just make one head and then they just turn it around for the other side. On this particular engine, the heads are different, but so are the head gaskets. And you can see on this one right there, it says right hand. So that is our passenger side and it has to go in on this orientation. I have this really nice Felpro gasket. It's got some nice silicone on the sides. It's multi-layered. This is kind of the gasket you want to go with. And the link is down below in the description because of course it was sent over by our friends at Summit Racing. We can just put that on the head alignment dowels. It's okay if it doesn't lie down like completely flat. The head's going to smoosh it down. Um, just make sure you have the dowels on there. And another thing you gotta look for and kind of make sure this does not happen is when you laid the head gasket down that there's no overhang over the cylinders. They can be a little bit bigger than the cylinder bore. That's fine. You just don't want the other way around where uh, there's overhang from the gasket material over the piston. That can lead to all kinds of problems. You don't want that. So that's something to look out for. Typically when you're only going 30 over like we have, you don't have to worry about it, but I feel like I should mention it. Before we put our cylinder head on, it's also a really good idea to make sure that none of our pistons are at top dead center, like, like these this. are. These are all down a little bit, which is a good idea. Um, just so when we put the valve train in later, none of the valves can actually touch the top of the pistons. That'd be a bummer. There we go. That's exactly where we want them because if all of these are in the position they're in right now, that means that the other side is also not at any of the pistons at top dead center, so we're ready to put our head on. And you just kind of want to go straight down with it. Luckily it's aluminum and the alignment dowels will help you put it down just like that. So let's talk about our cylinder head bolts. Our replacement bolts are actually made by Felpro and they are torqued to yield. I couldn't find any non-torqued to yield bolts and it's really not that big of a deal uh, for the heads because if I ever take the heads back off, I will go out of my way to find the actual non-torqued to yield bolts, but these do work. Uh, they're made by Felpro, there are our there is our part number, a little tough to see, and that was sent over by our friends at Summit Racing, and the link is down below in the description because these are torqued yield. If you torque down even one of them and decide to take it back out, you have to buy a whole new kit, and you do need two of these. It's one per side. They give you 10 bolts. Here's what they look like. They're an updated design, so instead of having the washer be independent of the bolt, it's actually molded into the head, which I think is a better way to go. But we have to prep each and every bolt before it goes into the engine. I'll show you how to do that. So what we're gonna do is take our ARP assembly lube. You could use engine oil or engine assembly grease, but I have this fastener lubricant, so why not use it? And you're just gonna apply it to under the head of the bolt just like that, looks nice. And then for the threads, we're going to grab our good friend RTV, link down below in the description, and put it all the way up the threads. You can even distribute it among the threads evenly if you like. So it looks more or less like that. You got grease underneath the head and RTV on the bolts. Go ahead and do that for every single bolt and we can start putting them in. So we can begin putting our bolts in and I'm just gonna go in our tightening sequence. So this is number one. And I'm just gonna get them started with my little screw gun. I'm not tightening anything down. I'm just bringing it down so the head of the bolt is just barely touching the head. And then I can go ahead and put the rest of the bolts in. So now we can start torquing down our head. I've brought in all of the bolts just down to touch. They're not even, I wouldn't even call them tight at all. And as per our instructions, here is our sequence, so you just you just kind of go inside out and follow along the one, two, one to ten um, for each cylinder head. And again, they're going to be different because they're different heads side to side. Our first step is torquing it down to thirty foot pounds. So I'm going to go ahead and load up my torque wrench and get to work. So I have my fifteen millimeter socket. We'll start with number one. Move to number two. There's three four, five, this is number six, here's seven, number eight, nine, and ten. Now our next thing we need to do, because this is torque to yield, is set our torque wrench, and you need kind of a special torque wrench for this, is to angle find. So we need to set our thing to angle and go up to 90 degrees. 
to set it still, let it do its thing. We're already at 90. Very good. Now, also, what's really important, uh, don't get interrupted while you're doing this, because if you lose track where you are, go out of sequence or something, the bolts are ruined. You have to take it all apart and start over. So we're going to go ahead and make sure we're not going to get interrupted and do this again. So we're going to go ahead, start a number one, and we're going to pull it to 90 degrees. There's number one. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. And ten is this one. Now, basically, now we get to do it all over again. I'm sorry, things are a little repetitive today, but that's just the way it is when you're bolting heads on, especially torque to yield. And this one's gonna be really tough. So make sure you have a good purchase on the bolt head. It's not like off to the side like this, you know? It's gotta be perfectly perpendicular to the head of the bolt. And we can start pulling. There we go. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Nine. Last one, finish strong. Ten. Woo! Ha, it's a heck of an arm workout, but I'm glad it is all done. Looks great. And go ahead and do the same exact thing for the other head. So the next thing we can worry about is our lifters. Mine are made by Melling and the link is down below in the description because they are sent over by our friends at Summer Racing and you need 24 of these. I already have 23 of them sitting in an oil bath. It doesn't matter what kind of oil as long as it's clean and new. And we can take that out of the packaging and then just drop it in gently and let them sit. Let them sit for at least an hour, ideally overnight. So now that our lifters have been sitting in our oil bath for a couple of hours now, I can take them out and put the flat side down into our lifter well, just like that. It looks very snazzy. And there is three per cylinder, and they're very easy to just put in. So just go ahead and do that for all of our pistons. So that's how to put your oiling system, cylinder head, and lifters on your 5.4 liter three valve engine. These cylinder heads are exactly the same uh, as far as the process of putting them on side to side, um, but the heads are side specific. It's not like a, a small block Chevy where they can go on, either one can go on either side and you just flip them around. It's not that way on this engine. There is a driver's side and a passenger side. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're putting the cylinder head on as well as the cylinder head gasket. Just something to kind of look out for and there's little printings that'll help you out and figure out which side goes where. If you found this video helpful at all, please consider giving a like or even subscribing because I've got even more Ford 5.4 liter three valve engine stuff coming Coming up and we're coming down to the end of this we're really close believe it or not we are we are pretty close to putting this in our truck and finding out how it sounds and how it runs and having the truck back on the road for not a whole ton of money compared to a new truck so I'm really excited to see what that looks like thanks again for watching thank you Summit Racing for sponsoring this video series and I'll see you next time